Hello and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can set an expiration time to a value that you are saving in local storage. So unfortunately there's no native way of doing this but what you can do is to create a timestamp and store that in local storage along with the value that you want to save there and then when retrieving it checking the timestamp if the time contained in the timestamp has already passed deleting the item otherwise leaving it and possibly checking it again at a future point in time. So the first thing to do in JavaScript is to create a new timestamp. And you can do that with the help of the native date constructor object. So if you call it on its own like this, this is going to create a new date object that is going to be set to exactly now. But the expiration time, you probably don't want it. The now, you want it to be sometime in the future. So what you need to do is to edit the date object. So I'm going to be setting the date to a certain number of days in the future. And I can do that by calling this set date method. So what you're doing with the set date method is effectively setting the day of the month for the new date object. And what you want to hear is the day of the month you want to set it to. So today is the 1st of January. Of course, I don't want the new date to be today. I want it to be sometime in the future. So I'm going to call the date constructor again, and I'm going to call the get date method on that. So this is going to return the current day of the month, which is one. So what I'm going to do here is to increase the value of the day of the month by 30. So now this timestamp corresponds to roughly one month in the future. So I log that to the console and we'll hopefully see the timestamp. So the timestamp is very hard to interpret because the underlying value of a JavaScript date object is Unix time. So in JavaScript, it's the number of milliseconds that have passed since January the 1st, 1970. But what I can do to get this number in more interpretable form is to place it inside of a date object and then that's going to actually print the date for me, not the number. So you can see that the expiry time corresponds to January the 31st, 2023, at the time that I actually made this timestamp as well. So the next thing to do is to create an item in local storage into which I'm going to be saving a value as well as the timestamp that we've just created. So I'll create a new item in local storage and I'll call it test item and the value that I'm going to be storing there is going to be an object inside json.stringify that's going to convert the object to a json string so the reason I'm doing that is because you can only store string data in local storage if you try saving an object directly there you will experience a data loss and it's an object because I can then create multiple properties for both the date and also the value that I want to store there. So first of all, I'm going to create a value property. So you want to set here whatever it is you want to save in local storage. And the second property, I'll set the value of that to the timestamp that we created. So I'll delete these console logs now and we'll take a look in the browser at the local storage item that we've saved. So I just refreshed and we can take a look at what's currently in local storage in the console. And you can see here that our object has been saved to local storage and it's in JSON string format. Now for the next bit of this tutorial, I'm going to switch to this next.html document just so the code doesn't get too cluttered with the storage and also the retrieving going on on one page. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to retrieve the test item from local storage. So I can do that by entering the key of that item, which was test item. And I'm going to store a reference to this under the name item. So first of all, what I'm going to do is check whether a value is actually stored under item. So I can do that with an if statement. 
passing in item. So if no value actually exists for item, then that means that the item doesn't exist. Maybe a user cleared their browser storage between sessions, in which case I'm just going to log to the console, no item. But if test item does exist in local storage, then what I'm going to want to do in this if block is check its timestamp against the current time to work out whether it has expired. So you can get a timestamp for now by calling the date constructor object. And on the result of that, calling the get time method. So this is giving you a timestamp in milliseconds and you want to check whether that value is greater than the timestamp on the item in local storage. So to get the timestamp from the object, you first of all want to convert the string version of the object that is in local storage, convert that back to a regular JavaScript object, and then you want to access the property on which that timestamp is stored. So it's going to be available on the X date property. So the result of this comparison is going to tell us whether the item in local storage has expired. And it's doing that under the hood by comparing the number of milliseconds since 1970 in terms of both the current time and the expiry date, which we have set. And now it's time to conditionally remove the item from local storage if it has expired. So we can check the value of res here, because if this is true, then we're further along in time now than the expiry date, and we should remove it from local storage. So to remove an item from local storage, we call the remove item method, passing in the key. Otherwise, you might want to do something with the value on the value property. So I just log that to the console here. So I'm going to pass item again, and I'm accessing the value property. Okay, so let's see this in action now. I've got the date set for 30 days in the future. I'm going to change that to right now. So the item will immediately expire. Now, if I refresh on the first page where we're setting the item to local storage, and then I take a look what's in there, you see that the item has been successfully stored there. Now, if I go to the next page and we take a look at local storage, you see that it has been removed from there. And that's because the timestamp is further in the future than the current time. So I'll change that now. So we can see what happens when the timestamp has not expired. I go back, hit next page. Now you see that it's logging value to the console. Now, if you want to be a bit more precise in terms of setting the expiration time, say you want to set it in hours, what you can do is instead of setting date, which is effectively setting day of the month, you set hours instead. And instead of getting the current date, you get the current hours. So in this way, I could set the item in local storage to expire in one hour or 12 hours, whatever it is that you want to set it to. And that is it for this tutorial. So I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.